So, we're almost there, the home stretch now. Tutorial 20, part nine this is. So there's very little left for us to do. Um, what we want to now enable is to enable our machine here to get out to the internet. Now we've already, you might be thinking, well hang on, we've already enabled port 80. And we have indeed, but this is the dead giveaway here. If I go to google.com, it resolves as S. So a lot of websites will be like that, where they will have uh, secure HTTP, which is on a different port. So that's port 443. So what we want to do is we want to go into our um, file. We want to VI this and add a simple rule that will allow um, on the public interface, us to get out to websites. So I'm going to copy that again, as I have been doing the whole way down. And then I'm going to grab this, and just paste that in. This is step 11, public outbound HTTP access, HTTPS access. So, what's the rule for this? Well, it's very simply, we want to say IP tables, we're going to append an output rule, and it's minus minus out interface is ETH0, the protocol is TCP, the destination port this time though is 443 and the state is minus, whoops, minus state new established or related minus j I almost forgot to say what we were doing with it minus j accept now if we've got an outbound we want an inbound IP tables minus a input so this time it's coming in and the minus minus in interface is ETH0 the protocol is TCP the, whoa, the source port is 443 so it's on Ethernet interface ETH0 port 443 and the state this time is established related minus j accept now what I didn't do was copy that to another file so I'm going to just copy allow yum to be allow HTTPS YOM DNS FTP SSH and ping dot sure. And then I'm going to go back and VI this one and go to the bottom and just get rid of this because we want to have the sequence. Save that one and I will just put HTTPS in here. Go to the bottom, just check that out. Yeah, all looks good. So let's run that and see what happens. So let's just see. Reload, nothing. Looking very sorry for itself. Whoops, I don't want that one. Kill that one. Close that. Slim that down. We want to run this file and see what happens. Oh look and there's Google. So as you can see we now have web browsability on this machine. So it's been a journey that concludes it in terms of the lab aspect of this. We now have a whole series of files 
that a whole series of files, a whole series of shell scripts that we can now take to our software cloud and actually work on machines on software. So I better make that tutorial 21, I think, because tutorial 20 is quite long um, already. So that concludes tutorial 20. We'll move on to tutorial 21, where we'll bring those scripts uh, A, onto GitHub, and B, uh, into our environment within um, software. And we'll see how the exact same commands can be used to secure our Linux machines in software. Thanks very much. I hope you're getting use out of these videos. My name's Eamon Killian, and uh, hopefully catch you on tutorial 21. And welcome back, and you may be surprised given my goodbyes at the end of the last video. Uh, this is an add-on. I had completely forgotten one of the elements, um, and it was when I was finalizing the videos for uploading onto YouTube that I realized there was one last element to do. It's a very, very quick element indeed, so we will add that now. Um, and it's basically the idea that uh, our machine can be a HTTP server. So, um, and I had mentioned it as part of uh, video one. So if we go to uh, one of our machines, client one here in this instance, and we go to 192.168.0.118, and we're not getting anything back. And we wouldn't expect to get anything back at this stage because indeed, even on this machine itself, if we go to um, 192.168.0.118, there's nothing there. There's nothing there on localhost. Of course there isn't because we haven't even installed an Apache web server. So we know we've got yum and everything working. So we are going to run our dot slash allow HTTPS dash and just run that. And we know we've got our yum capable through the outbound DNS and the inbound HTTP. So we can go yum install HTTPD. That'll find the mirror and ask us, find the package, and we'll go for it. Okay, lovely. So now, when we go to localhost, ah, of course, we have to start the service. Service, whoops, service, HTTPD start. <laughs> of course, it won't bring up anything. And there we go, that's what we expect to see, our Apache test page. And you would then install your virtual host and do all your configurations. But for the purposes of this video, what we want to see is, can we get that remotely? Because it would be our website. So now when we, of course we can't. We haven't got any HTTP service outbound. So that was the one last element I had forgotten, and my apologies for that. Um, so we need to add that. <coughs> Excuse me, we need to add that to our script. So what do we got in here? Um, let's copy allow HTTPS dash to allow HTTP server dash dash HTTPS. And what have we got afterwards? Yum, DNS, FTP, SSH. And ping finally dot sh. Excellent. And then we're going to vi allow dash httpsr. Okay, swing down to the bottom of this. And I want to grab all of these. I want to grab all of these lines. Copy. Paste them in here. This, of course, will be step 12. And in step 12, public HTTP slash HTTPS server enabled. I think I'll call it that, server enabled. Yeah, be about right. Fine. So. What do we want to do? Oh, these lines, of course, are a duplicate. So get rid of those. So how do we enable our HTTP service? Well, again, it's an IP tables and we'll append a rule. 
Um, up here, you may note, we already have uh, inbound on ETH0 for destination port 80, so inbound coming into us on 80. Um, and it's very, very similar to that as well. In, in fact, it's pretty much identical rule. Um, but of course, we have an outbound matching that going out to destination port 80. And we don't want the destination port to be 80. We want the source port port to be 80 on that uh, response. So I'm going to basically just add one rule which is going to, in fact, I'll tell you what, I'll add both rules. So we have an input. It's only duplicating essentially this one. So minus minus in interface. Because you may want to, it doesn't matter whether you have a duplicate rule, you, you may want to just have this in and of itself. So it's better to do it this way, I guess. Um, D port is 80. And we're going to match a state. And that state is going to be new, established, and we're going to accept. Whoops, if I could spell. And we're going to accept that. That's fine. So that's inbound to us, destination port 80, accepted. New connections and established ones. To match that, our appended output rule on the outbound interface of ETH0, protocol TCP, and on the source port, so it's coming from a browser, match state, and that state is established. And we're going to accept that. A bit like the other one, you may have 443 as well. So what I'm going to do is just do a yank yank of that and put it, and a yank yank of that and put it. Clean this up so there's only one gap between them. Exactly and precisely the same rule, but on 443. Because you may set your server up to be a secure HTTP server. And that's it. Now we're going to run it. So we're going to run that, and now we have public HTTPS. And when we bring, on, bring in our browser, and this is client 1, there we go. That's what we expect to see. What about client 2? And on client 2, I'm going to fire up a browser. Keep that a second. Do, do, do. There's our browser. And we're going to go to 192.168.0.118. And there it is. What if I go to 10, 0, 2, 15? And you can see here, very slightly, it's just hanging. Just hanging. I can prove that a bit more visibly by doing that. It's just hanging. Won't go anywhere. Of course it won't, because we didn't enable it on the private port. So we've got no HCP access to our server service on our server um, on the private. It's only publicly available. And my apologies for forgetting that and giving all the goodbyes on the last video. I will say goodbye again and thank you so much. This was uh, real fun doing all the IP tables for this. Uh, my name is Eamon Killian. I hope you're getting a lot out of these videos. Um, and thanks very, very much for watching. Tune in next time when we're going to take these scripts up onto IBM software.